Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And in the course Enzyme Science and Technology, we are going to discuss about the different properties of the enzyme. So, in this context, uh, in today's lecture, we are first going to discuss about the uh, basics of enzymes and then we are also going to discuss about the uh, different properties of the enzymes. So, when we talk about the enzymes, we always think about the biological system, right? Because the enzymes are also been known as the biological catalyst. So, when we talk about the biology, we are also talking about the different types of organisms. So, what you see here is that if you, uh, if, if any organism has to uh, complete its life cycle, it has to go through with the different phases of the life, right? So, in this uh, context, what are the different activities an uh, organism is going to perform? He has to, uh, you know, he has to uh, reproduce, right? He has to grow in size and he also has to uh, do all sort of uh, running the uh, different types of physiological processes, right? So, it has to also run the physiology. And all these processes are actually converging to a central point or the central place which are related to the production of the energy. So, it is actually being associated with energy and you might know that if I have to, if, if, if organism has to grow, it actually has to synthesize the different types of molecules like it has to synthesize the proteins, it has to synthesize the uh, lipids, right, because the lipids are actually going to be a part of the, uh, you know, the plasma membrane and the proteins are also being present in the different types of uh, plasma membrane and as well as they are actually the building blocks. Apart from that, it also has to synthesize the nucleic acid, right, and that nucleic acid is required for serving the purpose of the genomic uh, content of the cell, right? So, it is going to work as the genomic content and because when you when you want to grow, you also have to produce the more and more different types of cells, right? And for that purpose only you require the different types of synthesis of the different types of molecules. Similarly, when the organism wants to reproduce, it also has to produce, it also has to generate the gametes, right? So, it also has to produce the uh, gametes. Uh, in higher organisms, you could have actually have the different types of gametes. You can have the uh, male gametes and you can also have the uh, female gametes and all these male and female gametes are actually going to fuse with a complicated process and that is how they are actually going to form the zygote and that zygote is actually going to develop into the new offsprings. Uh, and uh, if you see all these processes related to reproduction, you are actually going to produce the gametes that is also require the synthesis of the proteins, lipids and nucleic acids. Then we also require the different types of uh, you know molecules which are actually going to regulate these processes. So, you also require the different types of uh, regulators. Uh, these regulators are commonly been known as the different types of hormones and these hormones are uh, either the proteinaceous in nature or they are actually going to be the uh, lipid based. So, these hormones regulate the different phases of the development and that is how you are actually going to have the new offsprings. Now, uh, after the reproduction, you can also have the different types of physiological processes that is also important for maintaining and as well as the continuing the life related activities. So, all these related activities, whether you are want to produce the new molecules or whether you want to produce the regulators, all these requires the very high quantity of energy and all this energy is actually going to be acquired by the nutrition, right? So, and the nutrition is uh, related to the breakdown of the molecules, right? Which means you are actually going to take up 
the uh, polymeric uh, compound right and that polymeric compound is actually going to be converted into the monomeric compounds. For example, you can actually be able to convert the starch into the monomeric compound like the glucose and then the glucose will actually going to uh, enter into the, uh, in, uh, into the metabolic reactions and that is how the glucose is actually going to produce the energy. The same is true for the other biomolecules like the lipids, uh, like the nucleic acids and all that, right. So, when we talk about the metabolic reactions, so energy you are actually going to acquire by the two different types of metabolic reactions. One is called as the uh, anabolic reactions and the other one is called as the catabolic reactions. Anabolic reactions are responsible for the synthesis of new molecules and the catabolic reactions are required for the generation of catabolic reactions are actually going to have the breakdowns of the molecule and that is how they are actually going to have the generation of the energy. Now, when we uh, either it is uh, whether it is the anabolic reactions or whether it is a catabolic reactions, all these reactions are actually going to be, uh, you know, require the different types of chemical reactions what is going to be performed, whether it is the reduction, oxidation, condensations and all these reactions. So, all both of these things are actually nothing but the different types of the chemical reactions and that is how the chemical reactions are actually going to be running of these chemical reactions is actually going to be the basis of the life onto the earth. And that is why all these chemical reactions are actually going to be uh, run in a, in, a, in, a, in a timely manner and that is the purpose of having a enzyme or the biological catalyst and that is what we are actually going to discuss in this particular course. So, these are the different phenomena what are responsible for running a uh, life activities into uh, organisms. Apart from this, uh, related to this, uh, we can also have the, um, you know, different types of requirements. So, uh, we have seen that the requirement is about the getting the nutrition, right? So, nutrition is one of the uh, basic requirement of a living organisms that we have already discussed that the nutrition could be, uh, you know, uh, required for running the anabolic or the catabolic reactions. Then we also require the oxygen. So, oxygen is required for running the oxidation reactions. Then we also require the water because the water is required for running the different types of reactions where the water is itself is going to be a substrate. Then we also have to maintain the body temperature and we also have to maintain the uh, pressure within the body actually. So, as far as the nutrition is concerned, the, uh, the organisms have adopted the different types of mode of nutrition. So, it could be either the autotropic nutrition or the uh, heterotropic nutrition, right. So, uh, and the machinery to acquire the nutrition in the autotropic nutri nutrition or the heterotropic nutrition is going to be different. So, autotropic nutrition is the molecule the, is present in the plants where they are actually going to uh, acquire the uh, energy or acquire the energy from the sun and that is how they are actually going to have the uh, chemical synthesis of molecule. Now, compared to this uh, heterotropic nutrition, heterotropic nutrition can be further classified like uh, the uh, non-parasitic nutrition or the parasitic nutrition. So, parasitic nutrition is actually the nutrition where the parasites are actually going to take up the nutrition from the other organisms uh, and Whereas, in the non-parasitic nutrition, they are actually going to take up 
the nutrition from the plants and that's how they are actually going to synthesize their own uh, food actually. Uh, once you have the food it is actually going to be uh, burned by the oxygen so that, and that's why we require the oxygen right. So food is actually going to be uh, burned by the oxygen that's how it is actually going to produce the energy and these kind of reactions which are responsible for generating the energy from the food are actually be a part of the catabolic reactions and all these reactions where the enzymes are participating actively into the reactions are actually we are going to discuss in detail. Then the water, so when you actually have the polymeric compounds they are or polymeric uh, carbohydrates for example like starch it has to be simplified and that is how it is actually going to give you the monomeric glucose because most of these uh, uh, catabolic reactions are actually taking up the monomeric molecule as the entry point for example the glycolysis Krebs cycle and all that. So that is always been achieved with the help of the water because water is actually going to serve as a interesting substrate to break down the uh, complicated uh, polymeric compounds such as starch or glycogen and uh, other kind of uh, polymeric substances. And this process is very actively being done in our uh, you know our elementary canal where in the process of digestions the polymeric compound are actually going to be converted into monomeric compound and then they are actually going to absorb into the blood and then they are actually going to be utilized into the catabolic reactions for generating the energy. Apart from that we also have to maintain a normal body temperature for example the 37 degrees Celsius. So that is only in the uh, in those organisms where we where which are actually going to be warm blooded animals in the cold blooded animals uh, they are actually not going to maintain the body temperature but they will actually going to maintain the uh, you know temperature and that is why they will actually will not be able to be very active uh, under the adverse temperature conditions. And then we also have to maintain the uh, atmospheric uh, temperature so that all the molecules would be under the uh, you know uh, adequate conditions to perform the different types of functions. Apart from so all these molecules are actually or all these processes are actually going to happen and that is how it is actually going to be responsible for the life of organism. But most of these processes may actually go bad right so they may actually go uh, bad in terms of uh, some sometime you may not have the adequate amount of oxygen sometime you may not have the adequate amount of water for example. So on those conditions these uh, processes are actually going to be disturbed and that is why it is important that all these processes has to be tightly controlled and that is how it is actually going to maintain the life. So these are the different types of activities what are actually responsible. So one of the major challenge is that you have to maintain the body's equilibrium under the non-changing conditions ok. This means you have to maintain a relatively stable internal environment regardless of the external conditions and then you also have to allow the changes within the narrow limit so that you can be able to accommodate the subtle changes in the for example you can actually have the you know the fever right so you can also have a fever and the temperature will go up from 37 to uh, you know 37.5 or uh, something like that right so that is allowed and then all these processes are under the dynamic equilibrium and because you don't want the changes into the body the body has different types of physiological processes to control these processes. So what are the different physiological processes? We have the digestion side. So digestion is actually the main purpose of digestion is that it is actually going to take up the compli complex food and it is actually going to convert that into the simple uh, nutrition and this simple nutrition is then actually going to be taken up, up by the organism and that is how it is actually going to produce the energy. This simple nutrition is going to be taken up by the circulatory system and that is how it is actually going to distribute the nutrition into the different parts of the body. Uh, that nutrition is also required for the musculatory system to perform the locomotion and then it also require for you know nervous system, endocrine systems and excretory system. So all these physiological processes are required for 
maintaining the constant internal environment and as well as they are also going to help in terms of the in, in terms of running the different processes and all these processes are totally controlled by the enzyme so uh, whether you talk about the digestion which we are actually going to discuss in detail uh, the, there are different enzymes which are actually going to make the breakdown of the complex food into the simple nutrition or whether you talk about the circulatory system, there are so many enzymes which are actually being participating into the uh, like blood clotting and all other kinds of processes or whether you talk about the muscular system where you have the many type of ATPases and all these ATPases are participating into the generating the energy, generating the potentials and all that and same is true for the nervous system also. In the nervous system also you have the so many signaling molecules which are actually participating in relaying the signal from one part of the body to another part of the body. And then endocrine system, we, these are the molecules uh, which are actually, these are the system which is actually going to produce the regulatory molecules and these regulatory molecules are uh, you know be a part of the uh, controlling the different types of processes and then we have excretory system in the excretory system also we have the different types of enzymes which are actually going to participate or which are going to regulate the uh, uh, renal activities and that's how they are also going to be uh, you know contribute in terms of the uh, running the physiology of the organisms. So to make it very simple let's take an example of the uh, very simple uh, nutrition okay so if we talk about the pizza for example if you if you take a bite of the pizza what are the things is actually going to start so that you can be able to uh, produce the energy and that's how you are actually going to have to maintain the life on the earth okay so pizza is actually being made up of of the three molecules one is the bread right that is the bread right the base it also can have the oil the, or the butter right what you are actually going to use and it also going to have all this kind of uh, uh, vegetables and other kinds of uh, cheese right so it also can have the cheese so that is actually going to be a source of proteins and when you take the bite of the bread right it is actually going to enter into the mouth right and from the mouth it actually will enter into the elementary canal. So within the mouth the bread is actually going to be digested by the enzyme which is called as the uh, uh, alpha amylase right so or tylene right so alpha amylase or tylene and that is actually going to convert that into the maltose okay and that maltose is actually going to give you the taste right and ultimately the bread is actually going to be get converted into the glucose after the complete digestion and that's how the glucose is actually going to uh, you know be available for producing the energy uh, what you will see here is that there are so many enzymes which are actually going to participate into this process okay Similarly, when you have the oil, the oil is nothing but the lipids, right? So they are actually going to be taken up and they will present, they will go into the elementary canal and they will actually going to produce the uh, fatty acids, okay? And the fatty acid is also going to uh, be available for producing the energy. And what you see here is there are so many enzymes which are actually going to participate. And what you see here is not only the enzyme, but it also requires the uh, like water in both the places it's actually require lot lot of waters and then we also have the proteins right so protein will also also going to enter into elementary canal and uh, they are also going to be get converted into amino acids and amino acids will not mostly or in general amino acids are not available for energy production but they are also going to be part of uh, making the uh, building of the body which means they are also going to be a building block but here also you have lot of enzymes like you all you are actually going to have the uh, pepsin you can also have the uh, carboxypeptidase and all other kinds of enzymes which are actually going to break down the protein into the smaller fragments and these smaller fragments are nothing but the amino acids so what you see here is that a life activities depends on the energy 
and the energy production it depends on the different types of reaction catalysis right so different types of reactions what are going to be catalyzed and all these reactions are actually going to be uh, very fast uh, if we want to produce the energy at a very very fast rate right and that is how the place where you are actually going to utilize the enzyme and enzyme or the biological catalyst. But this all actually we are probably know today that the enzymes are central to catalyzing the different types of reactions. But when the people have started observing these changes, they could not be able to understand that the enzyme is actually been responsible for this. So, this happens when the people were started looking at a process where they were actually trying to mimic the digestion like conditions under the in vitro conditions and they could not be able to do it because they were not aware of the uh, biological catalyst. So, there was a scientist, uh, Russian scientist Kershaw and what he was doing is he was actually trying to study how the starch is getting converted into the sugar. Okay? So, what he was doing? He was doing different types of experiments. He was uh, you know boiling the starch for very long time because uh, boiling for you know for example at 100 degrees Celsius or so. But it, he could not be able to achieve much success in terms of you know converting the starch into the sugar. So, what he did actually is that while he was doing this experiment of converting the starch into the sugar, what he did is he added a, a two drops of HCl or acid actually. So, what he found is that when he added the two drops of acid, he could find a large quantity of sugar uh, and he could be able to detect. And at the end, what he found is that this HCl was uh, unused. Okay. So, he found that the HCl was unused at the end of the reaction, which means starch plus HCl, he could found the sugar plus HCl. Okay. This means HCl was actually converting the starch into the sugar, but HCl itself was not participating into the reactions. And that is the, um, you know, that was very interesting because uh, before this, most of the chemists were aware of that if you have the A and B are two reactants, right? If you take the two reactant A and B and suppose you are generating the C, it is unlikely that the B is not going to participate into these reactions, which means you are not going to get this because that itself says that A is getting converted into C. But what is the role of the B? Okay, and that is how uh, this is this is the guy which was not participating into the reaction, but still it is actually doing the reaction, which means when he was doing this reaction without the HCl or without the acid, he was not getting this, which means and when he was adding this, he was getting this, but at the same time the acid was not being able to participate into the reaction is it could not is was not being utilized and that is how the uh, this phenomena was always is, is been the uh, first event which actually leads to the pointing the term called catalysis. The catalysis is a term which says that it is actually a process in which the the the, the substance are actually going to be get converted into the another substance which means the A is actually going to be get converted into the B, but the reactants or the, the, the catalyst is actually not going to be participate into these reactions. Well, for example, in this case the starch is getting converted into sugar, but HCl is not participating into this event and that is how uh, there is a new complete field of catalysis which is actually being evolved. So, people have started developing the different types of molecules and people have started developing the different types of factors so that you can be able to do this because earlier when he was boiling the you know even the starch for a very very high temperature, he could not be able to achieve much success because the 
it, it, the reaction was still happening, but the amount of sugar what he was getting from this uh, process was very, very low. So then uh, that actually was, you know, um, uh, you know, it started a new, rea a new uh, uh, branch of science which says that that you can be able to enhance the reaction without even uh, consuming or without even consuming a molecule. And that's how that process is called as the catalysis by the Swedish uh, chemist Virgilius. This actually initiated the process of discovering the different types of catalyst which can actually be able to enhance the reactions. And one of the things what people have always been facilitated by the that the when you take the meat or when you take the food it is actually going to be digested. So people have started uh, looking at the identification of the factor which are responsible for converting the meat into the uh, for example the carbohydrate or meat into the protein right. So they started developing. So what they have done is they have added the meat and then they added the stomach uh, secretions. Okay, and what they could found is if you do not add meat is not going to be get converted, but when they add the meat stomach secretions, the meat is actually going to be uh, get converted into the process uh, into the protein and it get digested. Similarly, what they have done is they have also started the, you know con converting the starch into the sugar with the help of the plant extracts. Okay. So, because the plant extracts are also going to provide lot of catalyst and that is how they are actually going to be converted. And that is how the, uh, the, the, uh, the French chemist, the pain was the first to discover an enzyme which is called as the diastase in the year of 1833. And diastase is a digestive enzyme which was uh, can be able to convert the uh, meat or food into the uh, simple molecules and it was extracted from the malt sugar and that is how you know that today also we actually take up the diastase which are mostly been present in the most of these uh, digestive tablets or digestive syrups and that actually helps in digestion of the food. So that is the first enzyme. So, so first enzyme which is going to be uh, you know uh, isolated or what is being reported is the diastase, the digestive enzymes and uh, that actually started the discovery or the uh, started the branch of the, uh, the science which is called as the enzymology. So, uh, the enzymology is the branch of science which is studying the different properties of the enzyme. Okay. But the enzymology took a very, very long uh, journey through which the enzymology is being developed and that is the enzymology what we are actually, uh, you know, so developed that we could be able to do many types of experiment, we could be able to do lot of things. So enzymology, uh, as the name suggests, is actually the field of science which study the enzymes and uh, the first enzyme when the people have started uh, develop uh, you know uh, isolated the diastase they started uh, studying the different properties but think this is did not start on the day one when the people started the diastase the enzymology developed even before that also so let's see what are the different discoveries uh, happened so that you can be able to have the well developed enzymology so let's see uh, what are the different uh, development happens when they were developing the enzymology so enzymology is uh, being developed as a field for uh, you know for applications purpose so uh, initially people were trying to see how we can actually be able to uh, you know make the meat little soft so that it is actually going to give the better taste and for that only the in the year of 7, 9, 1783 people have observed that meat can be little soft or tenderized if you add the gastric juices of the hawk or gastric juices of the any organisms. That actually is been you know said that there is something in this gastric juice which is actually making the meat little soft and that is how in the year of 1814 uh, the Kirchhoff observed that the 
proteinaceous component of the wheat was capable of converting the starch into the sugar. So, this is another way of uh, saying that the starch can be converted into the sugar and that is how people think that there is, a, there is some factor which is converting this right. And then the in the year of 1830 the Luce described the diastatic action of the salivary tylin. So, this is another enzyme what is present in our mouth right buccal cavity and that is responsible for also the same activity like converting the starch into the sugar. And then in the 1833 we discovered the first enzyme the first enzyme is diastase right the digestive enzymes right. And then in the year of 1894 because once you and you discovered the enzyme people thought that okay let us see how the enzyme works right. So, that also so how the enzyme works that is people was the first curiosity or first question people have asked and that is how in the year of 1894 the lock and key model was explained were was proposed to explain the mechanism of enzyme action. You do not have to worry about this because we are actually going to discuss about the lock and key model in the later lectures. Then the 1897 the people have started uh, making the cell free fermentations. So, before this fermentation was a big thing right because people were trying to convert one molecule in another molecule to the process of fermentations and so on. But all that was cell based where they are taking a sugar adding the yeast and then that is the yeast is converting the uh, sugar into the uh, alcohol. But since they, they were aware of the enzymes they know that there is an enzymatic activity which can convert the one biological molecule into another biological then they are started developing the cell free fermentation also. Then in the year of 1905 people have started developing the different types of cofactors. So, these cofactors are the molecules which are helping in the enzyme catalysis. Then in the year of 1926 the people have discovered the enzymes and they found that the enzymes are mostly being protein. So, in the year of 1926 people were not aware of the ribozymes. So, that is why the, the this is a general concept that the all enzymes are proteins ok. So, all enzymes are protein. Then the, in the year of 1950 the first immobilization of the protein. So, people have tried to reuse because enzyme is soluble in water. So, when you want to you know uh, get the product you will also going to get the enzyme. So, the people have started using the immobilization of enzymes so that the enzyme will remain within the vessel and then you can be able to keep catalyzing the same reaction again and again. Then in the year of 1951 the people have first sequencing of the enzyme is reported which is for the insulin and in the year of 1953 people have solved the structure of DNA because that has paved the way to actually know that ok this is the gene uh, which is responsible for the protein and that is how you can actually be able to utilize that information to produce this protein under the recombinant DNA technology. Then year 1958 another model was produced to explain the enzyme activity or the mechanism of action. So, that was called as the induced mo fit model to explain the mechanism of enzyme action. So, in the you see that in the year of 1894 people have discovered the lock and key model, but in the year of 1958 people have developed the induced fit model. Then in the year of 1958 the first protein structure was solved and that actually started the uh, another field which is called as the structural biology ok. And that is responsible for understanding the structure function relationship of the different uh, protein or even the different part of the proteins. Then in the year of 1966 people have discovered the genetic codes and uh, that is how the uh, people started the you know knowing that this is amino acid code by this particular gene genetic code this amino acid is code by the, this particular genetic code and that has a uh, uh, you know allowed them to clone that particular gene or clone that particular protein. Now, in the year of it 1968 people have discovered the first restriction enzyme. So, restriction enzymes are 
the enzyme which are actually degrading or which are uh, you know cutting the DNA. Then in the year of 1972, there was a first recombinant DNA which has been produced and that actually has uh, uh, paved the way in which you can actually be able to clone the gene for the enzyme production, right? And then we, 1977 people have developed the technique of DNA sequencing, right? You know that the Sanger's method, right? Sanger's method, Sanger's DNA sequencing method for which the Sanger go, actually got the Nobel Prize. And then in the year of 1978, the site-directed mutagenesis were developed. So that actually allows the development of different types of mutants for the enzyme. And that is actually going to help in terms of improving the quality of the enzyme. That all we are going to discuss uh, in uh, forthcoming lectures. Then in the year of 1978, the first recombinant protein that is the insulin is being produced and that is being utilized for the treatment of the diabetes. Then in the year of 1980, the PCR was discovered by the Kerimulus, right? And uh, that has revolutionized the way in which you can be able to perform the PCR, you can actually be make the multiple copies of the particular gene and you can be able to clone that. And then in the year of 1991, there will be a direct evolution uh, concept to understand how the uh, proteins are being evolved into the different organisms. And, uh, and in the year of 1977, the BSF lipase process to produce the chimeric amines. So that was the first enzyme which was utilized to produce the, uh, you know, the biological products. And uh, in the year of 2010, there will be an engineering of a transaminase to for the synthesis of the chemical molecules. Then we also have in the 2016, there was the engineered enzyme that actually is helping to form the carbon silicon bond. And then in the year of 2020, there are nine enzyme cascade to produce the uh, chemical molecule estabithir. So this is the first time that people were utilizing not only one enzyme, but a series of enzyme. And then that's how they are actually producing the chemical molecules. So if you see how the development of enzymology is being occurred from last uh, uh, more than 100 years that it has developed three fields actually or three different way in which the enzymology is being developed. The first is that it is actually being developed as the alternative of the um, cell actually. So in the first is that if you see that the uh, initially it is being developed because there are, there are uh, application of the enzyme. So it is being evolved, uh, you know, the, that application part is being very, very strong. So the first is the application study of enzymes, right? How you can convert that uh, meat into the soft meat or tenderization of the meat, or you can actually have the replacement of the fermentations uh, like the cell free fermentations, how you can be able to generate the different types of chemical molecules and so on. So initial phase was that you are, they were trying to, you know, discover the enzymes for different types of uh, identifying the different types of processes. Then uh, enzyme engineering is uh, one of the thing which gradually developed based on this particular basis because based on the requirements you can have the thermostable lipases, you can have the lipases or you can have the enzymes which will work under the extreme conditions and so on. Then the people have developed the theoretical understanding. So in the second phase, people have started developing the theoretical understanding of the enzyme, how the enzyme is, uh, you know, uh, interacting with the substrate, how different types of complexes are being formed and so on. And that actually has, uh, you know, evolved into the development of or proposal of the lock and key model and as well as the induced fit model, because these are the model which are actually being uh, proposed based on the study by, uh, under the theoretical study of the enzymes. Uh, and that actually helped in terms of enhancing the catalytic properties of the enzymes so that they can be able to process the same event even faster, right? So you can have the more efficient enzymes. 
and then the third phase is the modern enzymology in the modern enzymology people have started you know utilizing the molecular biology tools and the enzymatic engineering of the different types of enzymes which means they were trying to develop the side directed mutagenesis they were trying to do the you know the evolutions and all those kind of in parameters they were trying to utilize the bioinformatics artificial intelligence and all those kind of uh, you know things into the modern enzymology and that's how the modern enzymology is utilizing the different tools so enzyme molecule molecular biology is to reveal the relationship between the structure and the function of the enzyme as well as the catalytic mechanism and the regulation mechanism of the enzyme it reveals the life activity relationship of enzyme further the design the enzyme engineer the enzyme regulate and control the activity at the gene level which means you can actually do the knockouts of the enzyme you can actually do the knock-ins you can over express the enzymes in the different organism and so on and that's how in the modern enzymology they were trying to do multiple things they were trying to study the theoretical aspects they were trying to do applications of the enzyme also so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here thank you Thank you.